Does China lack positive role models? This may sound weird, but in the West, growing up, you've got comic books, right? You've got Spider-Man, Superman, you know, Batman, people fighting for justice, you know, people you can look up to as a kid and be like, I want to be like that. Or if you're lucky, you've got a strong father figure to follow, someone who teaches you how to do right. And I think it's an incredibly important thing. I did, however, notice that in China, we don't have superheroes. We've got the Monkey King's probably the closest thing to a superhero that China has. So Kong, you know, the uh, good old monkey, and Zhu Bajie, the guy who turned into a pig. Uh, if you know the journey to the West, these are the main characters from that. Failing that, you do have some dynasty warrior type people, you know, Tao Tao, you know, Fu Tao Tao, Tao Tao Jiu Dao, all that kind of stuff. But this is kind of old and outdated. It's nothing for the modern world. When it comes to modern entertainment like comic books and things in China, at least from what I've seen, it's usually kind of very bottom of the barrel toilet humor stuff. Things like Funny School. Um, and the most famous sort of long running cartoon series is Sun Mao, which is about a, a poor peasant boy and his little adventures, which of course are very entertaining, but it's nothing to look up to. I don't want to look up to being a poor peasant boy with three hairs on my head, you know what I mean? So the thing is, how does this actually change Chinese society? And how has this changed the children and my current generation? So, you know, I've always wondered why society, especially people of my age and generation in China have this same sort of attitude. And I can explain it away using this whole role model thing. You see, when I was growing up, I had a lot of choice when it came to role models and, you know, things to see. We had, of course, He-Man and Ninja Turtles and Thundercats and you name it, but there was always something interesting for us to consume. However, in China, there was no homegrown media because don't forget, China was still recuperating from the sort of terrible years that happened, uh, you know, during the, the past. And they didn't have any of their homegrown stuff. In fact, the only cartoons and, and consumables for children were from Japan, mainly. Things like Doraemon. Um, strangely enough, Transformers uh, is one of the cartoons that made it into China. And that's why these days those Michael Bay movies do incredibly well in China. It's because of the nostalgia. People that, you know, can recognize the characters and things like that. Because let's face it, those movies are pretty awful. So think about it this way. Imagine you're growing up in China and the only character, you know, cartoon character as a child that you can really identify with is Sun Mao. You know, Sun Mao is the longest, one of the longest running uh, cartoon characters in the world. Something like 80 something years old, started in the 30s. Um, but if you look at it, it comes from a time of great turmoil in China and it's reflected in the, the comics themselves. They're all silent comics, in other words, there's no writing in it. It's just, uh, you know, there's no speech, so character Sun Mao doesn't speak. But you see all these, like, terrible situations and they are, they're, they're awful. It shows, you know, there's him getting beaten up, starving to death, getting poisoned, you know, um, being, his friends being shot, um, his you know, horse that he's looking after being eaten by, you know, starving soldiers, things like this. It's not good stuff. And, you know, you're identifying with a character who's basically a poor peasant who's downtrodden. And you're seeing a situation where rich people are the enemy. And you see through the Sun Mao comics that rich people are bad, you know, opulent, terrible people. And uh, so the character that you're identifying with is a poor peasant. And the rich people are the, the, the awful people who sort of kick him and treat him badly and, uh, you know, take advantage of him. And he's just a poor little um, honest boy trying to make his way in the world. So that's who you're, you're identifying with. So you've got that. Then you've got the Monkey King, which is by far the best role model for young Chinese children. Because this is, in fact, very interesting. I like the Monkey King legend a lot. And it traces its way all the way back to the Song Dynasty, which is... I don't know, 900 and something AD. And uh, th that's where the, the main legend comes from. But in fact, it's been traced even earlier than that to a sort of a white monkey legend from, and I'm not talking about white monkeys like, uh, like yours truly, I'm talking about white monkey as in a, an actual monkey. But there's a legend from something like 700 BC. So, you know, this is incredibly old. Um, so it's kind of like, Bible times. It's like us looking at the, the Old Testament or something like that and uh, using that as our role model, which I suppose a lot of Christians do. But um, what I love about the Monkey King is it's a set of stories about this 
kind of godlike monkey, and he's protecting a monk, and he's got his traveling companions as they travel to the west in order to get these sort of Buddhist scrolls. But along the way, they are beset by temptation and evil and all sorts of things, and they have to overcome all these obstacles placed in their path. And it does teach a lot of very positive ideas, um, you know, as in don't give in to temptation and be careful of evil people, things like that. So um, even to this day, I will see young Chinese children running around on the streets pretending to be um, Song Wukong, you know, the monkey king. They do this kind of, let me try to just sort of balance and do, do a thing. Anyway, sorry, I'm not the most supple person in the world at the moment, but... Uh, you know, it's, to me, it's quite endearing to see this. And, you know, he's a cool character. He runs around with a staff, and he can fight, and he can fly, and he can jump really high and do all sorts of things. So um, I personally think that this is the most positive role model that uh, Chinese children now for decades and decades have had. Then you get, unfortunately, the worst kind of role model, which is the Lei Feng role model. Now, I'm using him as an example because there are plenty of other ones. And let me explain this. You know... It was in the uh, sort of early 60s. The Communist Party had made a huge screw up with the Great Leap backwards and they'd lost a lot of faith in the people because they pretty much destroyed the country. So what they did was they manufactured this role model. It's a manufactured role model. His name is Lei Feng. And they, uh, you know, after he died, they found his diary. And uh, in his diary, he wrote how much he loves the people and he loves the party and he loves Mao Zedong which is the equivalent to finding a diary where somebody writes how much they love Stalin and Hitler combined. It's not exactly something to look up to, but anyway. The fact of the matter is, then this whole <laughs> series of photographs emerge of this brave young man who um, helps the people, teaches children how to read, selflessly you know, gives his money that he earned really hard to improving sort of... Uh, local towns, things like that. So you've got this very selfless character, but the main sort of points of this Leifon character is that he loves the party, he loves Mao Zedong, this tyrant, and he, you know, loves the people, which is a good thing. It's good to love the people of your country. But what he is, is he is like a nationalist propagandist hero. So what you're seeing here is a glorification of being a nationalist and loving your country. And we see many of these characters, especially today, through films like Wolf Warrior, Wolf Warrior 2. You have these sort of uh, macho soldiers who can beat up everyone in the world and kill foreigners without thinking twice, and all in the name of the great and glorious Communist Party and, of course, China. So these are the role models we're dealing with here, guys. We're dealing with basically a poor peasant mentality, a downtrodden peasant mentality. Then we're dealing with something fantastic like the Monkey King or these sort of uh, dynasty warriors from the Sun Guo Xia, you know, the sort of Three Kingdoms era, which are historical figures and, you know, sort of old generals. But this is ancient history stuff, you know. It's kind of like us looking at Shakespeare for, you know, if I'm going around trying to be Macbeth or something, it's, it's not quite the same. Or, you know, Shylock or something along those lines. Um, and then, on top of that, you've got uh, the worst one, which is the nationalist propaganda hero. And if you combine all, the, all of these uh, role models together, you can get a very clear insight into the current state of the mentality of Chinese society. You get a lot of very nationalist, proud Chinese citizens who, at the same time, are very insecure and see foreigners and rich people as the enemy. Um, all kind of based somewhere in the middle with the good stuff that you get from the Monkey King, etc. Coming to this realization has helped me understand why you have these people that go out of their way to attack anyone who they see as either being uh, bourgeois or rich or foreigners who say bad things about China, say bad things or criticize China because, you know, you're going against everything that they were brought up to believe. Anyway guys, I hope you found this as interesting as I did. I can't wait to see you in the next one. Do not forget though, every single Friday you can catch another Serpents a Day down here. Lower Day 6 every single Wednesday. Most importantly though, ADV China every single Monday. That's where Seamilk and I do these adventures around the world. Mainly Asia. Um, and of course we have our live podcast every second Thursday. Until next time, you know the drill as always. Stay awesome.